We have been swept up once too often by promises unkept, by tragedies unexpected, by twists of fate unanticipated. And so in this Lenten season, we journey with Jesus, spirit-led, into the wilderness of our apprehension to face our demons of distrust and to find the courage to lean once more into the winds of grace and be uplifted by your mystical presence. Amen. Would you stand, please? <clears throat> that you, O oh Lord, have given me. 
you shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. We continue our reading in Luke. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from there. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time.
Touch deficient and light starved are we, like an inverted flame, eating any warmth down into its studs. The deepest despair is <coughs> madness, and it takes and it takes and takes a stomach never satisfied. This is not hyperbole. And that is gorgeous and good and decent is no luxury, not when its boy brings us to the wide wharf of war. Even as we stand stone still, it's with the entirety of what we've lost sweeping through us like a ghost. What we have lived remains indecipherable. And yet we remain, and still, we write. And so, we write. Watch us move above the fog like a promontory at, death, at dusk. Shall this leave us bitter or better? Grieve, then choose. I'm going to confess that it's a difficult time to know how to preach and know how to lead worship. We have been in this uh, place of unknowing for so long. And some of us were ready to move on from it a year and a half ago, and some are still not. And everybody has a excellent reason for being in that place. But where are we? Where are we in this journey? It feels like we are those Israelites wandering in the desert, thinking just over the next hill we're going to find that promised land, and then comes another wave, or another report of violence in our cities, or something that tears us back to this place of not quite sure yet. As I read the, the uh, poetry for this chapter, because we're doing a chapter of the book, Call Us What We Carry, every week, and as I read the poems, for Requiem, I had a whole bunch of them marked two weeks ago. And then last week I read them again, and it was like, well, no, none of those are right, and I changed it again. And I had no marking on this one. But for some reason, when I turned the worship service in, shallows is what felt good on that day. And so maybe it felt good to some, and maybe it felt completely wrong to others. But we are in this period of Lent, this period of letting go. And so just the title of the chapter, Requiem, called to me. Because we think of Requiem as horrible ending. Requiem is what we do at a funeral. But Requiem is not putting away forever. We never put away that which we have loved. We never put away the person that has left us. We say, rest in peace. And we let go. We let go of the need to fix we let go of thinking we can bring that person back. We let go and we say, rest in peace that which was, but we will not forget. It doesn't need to be an ending. But Lent is a time of letting go. And I don't want it to be a letting go into mourning, letting go into grieving and grieving and grieving because it feels like we've been doing that forever. 
And then I think about those Israelites, and we have had two years now. They were coming out of 40, right? 40 years in the desert, 40 years wondering, where are we? What is next? Are we ever going to find that promised land? Or you will remember that at one point they said, just take us back to slavery. At least we knew what was coming, right? Just take us back. And so there is this impulse for us to just want to go back to what was. But it's not going to be. And so where can we find those little moments of excitement for what is coming? Where can we find that sprout that is under the surface that is just ready to burst through the ground as soon as the snow goes away? Which it looks like is going to be a little longer than we had hoped, right? <laughs> this morning. Where do we find that excitement for life? Where do we pull together A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. That's a story from my life because one of my university, one of my seminary professors said that is basically the core of the faith right there. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. We are descended from that wandering Aramea Aramean, right? We are descended from Abraham, the one who got itchy feet, the one who said, it's time to move on. God said, I think you need to leave this place. He left that place. And then there was this journey, this long journey that the Israelites went through, including the slavery and the 40 years in the desert. And when they came back, they said, tell the stories. Tell the stories. When you takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord. When you make your offering, you'll say, a wandering Aramean was my ancestry. And you tell the story of your people. So, I'm going to confess that when I read this text in the context of where we are, I was thinking about stories and who gets to tell the story? What story would the Egyptians tell about the Israelite nation? Would it be the same story as what the Israelites tell of themselves? And who has the power to tell that story? And I think of that in the context of the struggles that our nation is having over history and over letting go of that oversimplified mythology that we learned when we were kids. It was all told through the eyes of white colonizer settlers, right? That's the story that was told because it was their story. I don't Plain and evil intent in telling that story, but it's the only story that was told in schools. It's not a bad story. It's just only this much of our nation's story. And so if we're going to move forward, if we're going to heal, we're supposed to tell our story are we only supposed to tell that little piece, or are we supposed to tell the whole story? Which means a whole lot of us have to just learn a lot more about the stories of our people. A whole lot of us have to learn
to know what life was through the eyes of the Native American people. When our ancestors, somebody said, you've got some free land, and we said, wow, fabulous. We didn't really know that there were some other people that actually already lived there, right? It was a surprise. But if we only tell that white colonizer story, we don't ever get to hear how our moving into the neighborhood hurt people deeply. We don't get to hear how people in power abuse that power to make sure that we could move in because, you know, we'd be more amenable to what they were trying to do to get the power, right? There are all these, oh, I could go on forever, I won't, I won't. <laughs> our story, we like the stories that we were told in elementary school. I don't know about you, but history, by the time I got to high school, was nothing but war after war after war. We learned the history from this war to that war to that war to that war. We didn't learn why we were at war. We didn't learn what was going on outside. We didn't learn what was going on between those wars. We just learned these are the wars that conquered and these are how we got there. Another tiny piece of the story. And it's easier for our brains to just stay there. Right? But we're called to this faith that encourages us to expand what we know, to expand on, on our story, to expand on this wandering Aramean story. And I'm just going to, the, the last thing before I will let people uh, jump in if they have something, I highlighted this sentence. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. As all of these different stories come up, our tendency to fight is to fight over whose story is right. Our tendency is to clamor, to see who gets to control, to clamor, to see who gets the most, to shut people out. A wandering Arab man was my ancestor. Therefore, I'm going to celebrate with everyone who is around me, and we are going to be a people together. Because God has called us to that. Is there anything anyone would like to add? Just making sure. If not, I am going to invite. Jordan and George. And if the boys would like to join, that's just fine up front.
And at this point in their faith journey, they feel led by the Spirit to claim a covenantal relationship with Christ and with New Journey United Church of Christ. So the scriptures say you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ, in whom you are also built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And so, I'm going to ask you, Jordan and George, do you wish to affirm your covenant with the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I do. And do you promise to be Christ's disciple, following in the way of our Savior, resisting oppression and evil, and showing love and justice, and witnessing to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able. So answer, I do need the help of God. And do you promise to continue to grow in the Christian faith, celebrating Christ's presence, furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and deepening your connection with your Creator? If so, answer, I do need the help of God. And do you promise to participate in the life and mission of New Jersey United Church of Christ, sharing regularly in the worship of God? and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? If so, answer, I promise, with the help of God. Then I would invite all of us to stand if you are willing and able, and uh, let us unite with the church in all times and places, and we are going to confess through our United Church of Christ statement of faith. Because that's not the statement of faith. <laughs> Do we not have that on the... Oh. Uh, okay, get out your hymnals. <laughs>
And so I invite the members of New Journey, would you join me in expressing our welcome and affirming our covenant to mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of New Journey United Church of Christ, we extend to you the hand of Christian love, welcoming you into the company of this local church. And normally I would come and shake your hand. And I woke up with a cold this morning, and so I'm standing here. So hard. So hard. <laughs> and so, can we pray? Loving God. We praise you for calling us to discipleship and for gathering us into this body of Christ. We thank you for the people gathered in this congregation and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in life and worship of the church, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Um, and we are going to sing. We're, no, you can give them to them. But we're going to we're going to uh, sing to you. And you, if you feel odd standing there, you can you know choose where to go back to. You. <laughs> we're going to welcome you. Take it. 
nice deep breath. Remember that the Spirit is in this place, filling each and every one of us with the confidence of God's presence. And so we lift these people in prayer on this day. Prayers of healing for Randy. Randy, we hold you on the way of Christ. Continued prayers for Aunt Phil. Aunt Phil, we hold you on the way of Christ. And for Aaron. Aaron, we hold you by the light of Christ. And today we also lift Harley. Harley, we hold you by the light of Christ. And we have a prayer, a wish that spring will come soon, and for all those who are longing for spring. We hold you by the light of Christ. And today we lift prayers for a friend and family, for a full recovery and fast healing from a planned open heart surgery. So to that family and friends, we hold you by the light of Christ. And Jason is having bypass surgery this week. Jason, we hold you in the light of Christ. Are there prayers that didn't get written down that need to be lifted in this congregation today? George and Jordan. We welcome you and we hold you in the light of Christ. We once again hold in our hearts and our minds and lift to you all of the people in Ukraine and those who are fleeing and the nations that are taking in refugees and the people protesting around the world. All of those involved in the conflict in Ukraine, we hold you in the light of Christ. And I think of the woundedness of humanity, the woundedness of hearts that would lead to believing that dropping bombs is going to solve our problems. For those with hardened hearts, we hold you in the light of Christ. Holy One, you know what remains unsaid. You know those prayers better than we know them ourselves, and so we lift them to you as well as we say together the words that Jesus taught us to say, <coughs> Creator of all that is, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
Thank you. 
you pray with me, please? Gracious God, may your gifts of love transform and enliven in us, that we may live lives of thanksgiving. May your presence among us provoke such longing for your realm that we will never be satisfied until the whole earth knows your justice, your peace, and your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. to be 
be exciting to have a sound system that works, that doesn't have crackling speakers and too much reverb and all of that stuff. We're really looking forward to it. And more jacks for mics. So we're really excited about what's coming. If there's nothing else, let's sing, shall we?
driveway was wasn't great. It looked like grippy. Wow. Yeah. It wasn't so slippery. It wasn't so slippery. Yeah. Look, I didn't fall down the woods. Yeah. Well, it's been just different every day, you know, it's gotten better every day, but it was pretty bad. That's the way she made it sound. Oh, she, she was really cool. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, thanks, Dan. Oh, Is there a good choice